to Joy Fido International and today we're coming to you from Port Harcourt that's in Nigeria, the eastern part of Nigeria. Port Harcourt is actually the state or is the capital of River State where I'm, I'm from and I took a visit down here and decided to have a quick chat with you coming from here. So welcome on board and my name is Joy Fido. Now today we're going to be talking about something really exciting as always. Joy Fido International's main mission or vision, starts with vision then mission, is to really inspire you to success in life generally and generally in the sense of I don't know what you're trying to achieve. But whatever it is, we want you to get there. And the thing with life is everything we think about or we dream about or we want to do starts from the mind. So this is so interesting because no one has ever seen the mind. No one knows what the mind looks like. But everyone has a mind. And this is an area where everything we become starts from. It starts with an idea. Something just goes, it's like a flicker. It just hits you. And once it hits you, you go, oh, you know, some people call it the light bulb. It just hits you and you think, oh my goodness, I've got it. I have an answer. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. And so the interesting thing about the mind is you have to really learn to listen to it. You really need to understand how your mind So your mind controls your emotions, your mind controls your actions. Um, the thoughts that come through your mind becomes the action you take and the action you take becomes what your physical world becomes and that becomes who you are. So, in a few other videos, I've always said this is one area, this is this, it is the biggest asset that I can think about that we have. Because in some instances, you see people who are physically, physically incapable of doing things, but they still achieve so much. Like in Paralympics, where you see all these people who are physically disabled, disabled because they're not what you will call complete able body but they still achieve a lot and where does it come from it comes from the mind and so if you're able to really have a good grasp of what goes on in your mind you're halfway there in achieving great things in life and so i always say you have to put like you know like when you have a policeman or you know security about you know some people have obviously worldly possessions, amazing things, and they go, this will cost so much money, I'm going to insure it, and I'm going to put so much security on it, and I'm going to lock it away and make sure no one has access to it. That's what we should do with our mind. It's, it's like you should have a gatekeeper there that really protects what goes in and out of your mind. And so, um, our topic today is about reprogramming our mindset. Or, um, I call it programming because it's become very clear to me from various readings that I do and from various movies that I watch and from the things I access, I'm able to access, that everything will become comes from our mind and everything that it has become or our mind has been able to create for itself has been based on all the things we've picked up along the way in our lives and that's what some people call programming so we've been programmed over time to become who we are today um, there's, there's some person I'm listening to his videos on, on YouTube as well a friend sent it to me his name is Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor, and he goes really so much into details about understanding this programming of our mind. So this 
title today is about how we shift our mindset or reprogramming our mindset. And it's really important that we do understand our mind so we can understand our life. That's what it's all about. So welcome on board. Okay, so this is why I've had to go into so many details about the mind. Um, I know, I know as a people, as human beings, or as a race, especially when I start looking at the one I call Jotfido Africa, um, we are very keen on seeing something different in our lives. Um, we are very interested in changing things around us, or rather I wish we could change things around us. And you, you see all of us questioning and constantly questioning and questioning. And apparently it's about, you see, the changes we want on the outside starts from the inside. Okay, so the, the changes we want in our physical world has to start from our mind, the internal person. And so we're sitting down there, we are hoping that we will have all these amazing things happening in our real life, but our mindset is being closed down. And this is such a big thing because I feel, and in the process of, you know, going into my business and trying to help as many women out there, especially with the hair industry and hair care industry, I've had to come across so many people. And one universal factor that I keep seeing coming across over and over and over is our mindset. And, you know, there are videos where I've mentioned that you, you see people, I, I see people call me from time to time, they want to make a change in their life. They want to start a business. They want to go into hair business, for instance. And I've had instances where I had a lady who came to, um, to learn from me and all she wanted to do was do the most basic course. The most basic course is, for instance, braiding is like introduction to hair braiding and you just learn the single plaits, eye extensions, cornrows, eye extensions, done. This lady has invested over 20,000 pounds to rent a place to run this business from, just to rent a place. And she's invested in so many chairs, you know, all the classic chairs to set up a fancy salon. And she said to me, I'm going to have plasma TV on every workstation. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to have one of the top clients come to my salon. And exciting. I was excited for her. But you know what was funny? The knowledge that she's going to sell, because the industry we're talking about is a service industry. It's not an industry where you just buy and sell. You cannot buy a physical skill and sell a physical skill. You could be doing that in the sense of having labor. You buy labor where people come and work for you and then they become the ones that, that give the service to your clients. Now the problem with that, which we do come across so many times people complaining, is when you buy labor, Labor is not in your hands. Labor is in somebody else's hand. And so the person can decide to do with their labor what they feel like doing. So there are days she doesn't want to show up. And you have clients waiting in the chair. And it's her prerogative. She doesn't want to show up. Or, or there are days she'll tell you she's ill. And that's it. Nothing you can do about it. Okay, so this lady has gone... Um, we're, we're talking about how you then go and buy labor and, and you hope that the labor will be there when you need it. And so the story was saying about this lady, she's gone buying all this infrastructure, renting a place, chairs, um, TV, materials and materials and materials. And the main thing she's going to sell, which is the service, is the knowledge of attending to her clients and offering them a service of caring for their hair and all that goes with that industry, she was not willing to put the money down. So this particular course cost 500 pounds and that's what she wanted. Just two skills, three skills, four skills, that was it. And these are, to us, that we call it introduction, that's just the basic. It's the kind of course that someone who's got a child and wants to be able to manage or care for her own child's hair will go and take on not for someone who wants to run a business and a business with the mindset of 
I want to attend only to the best people who are willing to pay good money. So you want to offer a service that you're going to charge good money, but you don't have the skill. This is where my issue comes in with mental conditioning. How do you put at the back of your mind that you want to offer a service, but you don't have that service in your hands? And you want to run a service that's going to offer that particular kind of skill. So what has made us, what has put us in this situation where we cannot think properly? Because you're willing to put 20,000 pounds down just to rent a place, but to gain the skill, 3,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds is too much money to invest. Rather, let me just put 500 pounds down for me to run a place that's going to start with 20,000 pounds rent. So what kind of mindset is that? Who, who, who helped you to think in that way, in that particular way? Now, conditioning or programming starts from childhood. It starts from how your mother, when you do something wrong, mom says, no, that's not right, child. And so somewhere something has just sat there to say, that is not the right way of doing that thing. You may follow your mom at that time, but it picks up. And you go to school and the teacher says, no, who taught you that you should do it that way? No, that's not the right way, do it this way. And you pick that up. And you go to church and the church says something. And you pick that up. And you walk around your friends and they say something. And you pick that up. So over the years, you accumulate a way of thinking, a pattern of thinking. And this pattern of thinking may not necessarily be for your own good. And so that's what programming is all about. And so what I'm hoping to do, which this particular video is about, is how do we shift our way of thinking? How do we shift that way we've been programmed to think? So that we are thinking for the better, for the better good of ourselves, for the better good of our people. So how do we change our mindset? How do we change the way our mind has been programmed? Because I feel we've been programmed so wrongly and this has come from a series of things that has in particular happened to the black race. The slave, slave, I call it slavery mentality and then the way we look at life and then the way we complain about everything around us. So you see us in the West and we, we blame it on racism. Yes, where it does happen, but most times we actually encourage it. We look for every reason to say, the reason this has happened to me is because I am like this. And then we have issues where we do not want to sacrifice. And that is a very big one right now here in Africa because everyone just wants to make money so quick. I don't want to put in any time. I don't want to put in any money, but I just want to make money. And so you're hearing people, yes, there is unemployment, but then there are also instances where people can create their own jobs. But no, we would rather. We have issues right now, especially here in Podago and River State, where people are being kidnapped for ransoms. And you hear people, there was a story we heard the other day, it was so touching, an 82-year-old woman kidnapped. And what happened? For some ridiculous money, yes, not ridiculous in the sense of the amount of money, but they, uh, they asked for a lot of money and in the end the money was paid and the lady died in the process. So how do you, how do you deal with things like that? That's because the way our mind has been programmed, we do not see success as coming from hard work. We see success as why don't we get into a political position where it is so bad that to even think politics in this part of the world, you're thinking of putting your life on the stake. Because somebody dies, everybody's after the others, the other person's life so that they will eliminate the opposition. And so these things we need to think about. How do we recondition really our mind to think success, to think progress, to think hard work, to think I invest and then I reap. You know, the Bible says that you have to sow in order to reap. And the interesting thing is we go to church, we all do go to church, but we choose the passages of the Bible that suits us. It says we should sow. We should sow. If you sow, you will reap. And when sowing to me means investing. So a lady like the story I just gave will invest 500 pounds, but she's 
you know, in training, in getting skills, but she's put so much money on physical things. And so now she's going to employ people who may not turn up when she wants them, people who will not offer the service the way she was dreaming about it. Where is the result going to come from? You know, so I want us to start thinking about how we can recondition our mind away from poverty. I, I also call it the, the, the poverty mindset, the painful mindset, the I am inferior mindset, I am not good enough mindset. All I see is pain and sadness and sorrow and unhappiness and we're not thinking outside that box. So how can we do this? The biggest way to start thinking and reprogramming your mind is to start educating yourself. And education does not mean going to school and being told by teachers to do it this way, do it. That's another form of, re of programming. So to reprogram yourself, I just mentioned this Bob, Pro Bob Proctor guy, and there's so many of them, so many out there. I did a course in NLP, Neuro Neuro Linguistic Programming, and this is about how the mind, you know, connecting our words, which is linguist, linguistic, neuro linguistic, our mind or our brain with the with the words that come out of our mind. Remember what we said uh, in one of the episodes where we said, um, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So. The kind of words that we are using connect with how we act in. And that's what I'm talking about, how an idea hits the mind and then the mind constructs it and it becomes something that we physically put into action. So I told about taking a trip to Nigeria. It was a thought, it was an idea. I am physically here now in Nigeria, so it starts with the mind. So if your mind is thinking success, progress, how do I make things better? The interesting thing is, we are, we are body and soul. Our spirit walks towards whatever we're thinking. And you start hearing things about the, you know, the, the physical mind or, or the physical being and the, 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 the conscious and the unconscious mind. The conscious being the one that's here and now and we're feeling pain and we're thinking immediate us. But the unconscious is the spirit in us that is constant. And so, it does not obey silly commands, it is embedded in us to know what is right and what is wrong. But when the physical conscious mind comes, it just takes over because we haven't given it the right things that it should be taking, you know, latching on to. So the sooner we start reorganizing the thoughts that we put in, and you remember when Obama got into power and the slogan was, Yes, I can, or yes, we can. Yes, we can too, as Africans. Yes, we can change our life. We can change our situations. So we're talking about reprogramming our minds and how do we go about reprogramming our mind to get the kind of information that gets us ready to create a better world. Now, what we're saying is, first, your mind create ideas and these ideas are how to create your actions and these your actions are how to create the results you achieve so if we're in a position where we're trying to create a better result here we need to take it right back to our mind so what kind of ideas are coming into our mind how are we able to pick up on the ideas that give off give us a better result that we are looking for and the very first stage to start our journey in reprogramming our mind is to make sure that we have an educated mind. You know what they say about knowledge is power. So what you don't know, you don't know that no matter what you think you know, if you haven't gone into researching and understanding what that topic is, you don't know it. So it is so important that we educate our mind. And this is what we're talking about. Education is not just about going to school. It's about constantly researching. And so whatever you want to deal with, you have to research it. And now, this is where it gets more interesting. Information is power. And once you have information, you are in a position of confidence. 
Now, confidence is so important in whatever we do because if you don't have confidence in whatever that topic is, you are not able to talk about it. It affects our skills, it affects everything we do. Because I have people who come to train with me in understanding how to work with hair. You hear people who say they've been working with hair for the past 25 years, but they still don't feel so confident about doing it. Confidence comes from knowledge. So what you don't know, you can get so good at it that you can talk about it and it flip off a hat. So, you need to educate your mind and how do you go about educating your mind? It's about reading. It's about being curious. It's about being inquisitive. So this is where I'm coercing you, I'm chatting with you, I'm wishing you are able to start research, start learning new things. Start engaging your mind. Start informing your mind. Because once your mind is informed, you are in a position to dream of ideas. And once the ideas come in, you are in a position to put it into action. And once the action comes, your results follow. This is where we're talking about reprogramming our mind. Because over the years, our minds have been programmed to think and behave in a particular way. And the kind of thoughts that's been coming to us haven't been encouraging. They haven't helped us grow. We're looking about, we're talking about growth. So if we can help our mind to pick the right stuff, we are going to grow to the point that we really wish to get. And it then comes back again to choice, making the right choices in life. So you're talking about educating your mind, but once you've educated your mind, what next comes? What comes next is picking the right choices. And choices is down to you. Where the Bible said to us, one of the biggest things man has against the other, the other animals or the other creation by God is that ability to think. And not just thinking, but the ability to choose and choose the right things. So we're talking about choices. So making the right choice in whatever situation you find yourself. Now remember, we're talking about the, you know, the big difference between an achiever and someone who doesn't achieve is their ability to make the right choices and their ability to think, to think thoughts true. So I want you to be in a position where you are able to look at whatever scenario there is and then you're able to think through it and decide for yourself which is the right choice to make, which is the right position to take. This, that's where we are. That's what reprogramming your mindset is all about. Because over the years, this is something that's so interesting for me. Over the years, we've been made to think in a particular way. And this is an example. We've been, we, we go to schools and then we learn because the teacher says this is right, this is wrong and then we listen to it, all programming and then we carry on and then we finish and then we go higher and go higher and go up to university which is the college for the Americans and then you come out and what happens? You look for a job. That is a mindset. That is a programming mindset. And what I keep asking people over the years in my videos is so who was actually created by God to sit out here and set up jobs for everyone? When you really look at people who have achieved, no, it is no one's job. There's nobody that God sent down to the earth to say, okay, your job is to create jobs for other people. So we need to work out of this programming system or programming method where all we know as we finish our universities or whatever this academic education we're taking is to sit down and wait until somebody employs us and my dream for everybody is for you to be able to create your own self-employment self-employment is about using your hands to create whatever comes to your head one of the biggest things i deal with is people just sit there and hope to find a job you sitting there hoping to find a job is a program in your head you've been programmed to think that the only way to get a job is to have someone creative for you. 
How about we reprogram our mind? so that we realize that we don't have to wait for someone to create a job, that we can create our job. This is one of the things I teach in my workshops, in my trainings, in my, in my um, uh, uh, academy where we offer training for hair. We, my biggest thing in all the students I've trained over the years is self-employment. And it's worked, it's worked out so amazingly. Because we have students across the world who have learned how to create their own jobs. Okay, so you're learning to create your own job by being able to employ yourself. The biggest thing God gave us is that independence of thought. That freedom to make our choices. And this is what I mentioned earlier, no one can see our mind. Our mind is one place where science has not been able to penetrate into. And so we have that freedom. No one can make you think a thought that you don't want to think. But because we've been programmed over the years, we think that thought we're thinking is the right thought. But we have to remember, this is a big one, we have to remember we are spirits. And I never stop talking about it. We are spirits and we are bigger than this image that we see physically. So there's so much investment that God put into us. And that's where our mission, remember I mentioned the mission, our mission here is to provide service to our community. That's the biggest mission. And so whichever way you want to look at this service to your community, it's up to you. And this is where people then make choices of, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be that. And you are contributing to create a better society for all of you within that society. So it's not always down to you being extremely selfish and wanting just the best for your family and everyone close to you. It's about creating something that works for the whole community. And this is why you see me, especially with the African experience, when people start getting extremely selfish and Cutting away billions of money that belongs to the community, it, it just defies the whole purpose of life. Because at the end of it all, there's only a lifetime for you. So to reprogram your mind, you need to have knowledge. And knowledge, like we always say, is the power to life. Knowledge is everything. So your mind has been formed based on things that you could not control. Obviously, from childhood, everybody influencing your life and kind of like poking you in different directions. But now you've grown up, now you want to be in control of who you are. So the first things you need to do is take a lot of knowledge. How do you gain knowledge? You start to study, you start to read. You start to research and one of the easiest way is just simple newspapers or magazines or you know let's say for instance you're looking at hair and hair was something you really want to deal with there are loads of magazines that talk about hair i i had an experience where one of my students came around for training and yes she loves hair and yes she wants to work with hair but she's never bought one magazine on hair and I was showing her magazines with images of hairstyles and different things going on. And she said, could I have this copy, please? This was for training because I have all these things available for when students come and show them just to add more to what they know. And this was an instance where she has never seen a magazine on hair. But you have come to learn about hair. So it's about preparing yourself. It's about Empowering yourself is about putting information and knowledge into yourself such that when you're talking about that thing, you're extremely confident about it. So, you want to reprogram the way you think. You want to rewrite. It's like, um, this is a very interesting one. They said once a child is born, that child's mind is blank. And the word they normally use is tabula versa. So a child comes black, and so we start to write on that blank slate as the child is growing up. So everybody the child is in, you know, touching is influencing the way the child starts to think. And so normally people say to you, when you grow up, where you grew up 
world from most times influences the way you see the world. So now you want to see the world in a bigger form, in a better form, in a more positive form. What you have to do is start to retrain your mind to now see things in that direction. So that's what reprogramming is all about. And it is something that I think all of us need to really start doing. Because the results you're seeing today in your life is based on what you've been programmed with. Most times you're being dealt with, that is impossible. And it's one word I really hate to hear. Anybody around me who knows me, I do not believe in impossible. I also say to people, not even the sun is the limit or the sky, you know, like they say, the sky is the limit. Not even the sky is the limit. Nothing is the limit. What is the limit is your mind, is your mindset. What stops you in life is what you take inside and believe and imagine and, you know, dream about. And, and because when you actually dream about something, the next thing that comes is, how do I achieve it? What do I need to do to get to that thing I want to achieve? What do I need to do to bring it to life? So once you start giving yourself impossibility, it's never going to happen. And the interesting thing about life like we hear is, this life has come to stay. Life is life. Earth is earth. All the things you see here are things that are here on earth. The one thing that is not permanent is you. We are the ones who are not permanent. So we are not permanent, we are temporary. And so um, once you change your way of looking at things, everything around you changes. Your world changes. Your experiences start to change. Your life changes. So it is down to us. That's a big message I want you to get from this particular video. We have to reprogram the way we think. We have to reassess all the things we took on as a child, from secondary school, from primary school, from university, all those things that the society we live in has been putting into us to believe that that's who we are. In the real sense of it, the physical you is not just you. I've talked about this a few times. There's a mental you, there's emotional you, there's a, a spiritual you, the spiritual you is even the bigger you because that's the one that no one can influence. That's the one that's sitting silently waiting for you to come and actually wake it up. And most times I say to people, that physical you you say is not really who you are. It's just, it's just the body that's taking you through this air. So if you can put that power back into your spiritual you, you find that there is nothing that's impossible for you to do. And then there's no one that's going to come and influence you and make you feel inferior for anything. This is especially for us black people. I look at us most of the time and then all you're hearing, oh yeah, that's not good enough for a black person. That black person, no, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. No, it's the same brain in all of us. It's for us to utilize what God gave to all of us. And like I said earlier, we've all been made and created in the image of God. We are a replica. So it's for us to tap into that spiritual us, which is a God-like form in us, and use that to achieve great things on this earth. It is our job to do that. It is for us to achieve greatness for the world. It is for us to create a community that will benefit from us, from the services we give to the world. And in another view, one of the things I said is we are a blessing to the world. So if we can tap into our spiritual by reprogramming the way we think, we're going to create a better environment and society and community and life for ourselves and for everyone around us. So remember to really, really start to delete all those negatives that we put in you. A big one which I explained earlier is when people think Putting knowledge into your to their head is a waste of money. That's where you start to get it wrong. So training is so important by putting knowledge in there. And the only way you can achieve success or achieve knowledge is by investing in knowledge. Investing in knowledge comes in so many forms. We talked about buying magazines and reading them, buying newspapers and reading them, listening to news sometimes, watching a movie. I get so much inspiration from watching a movie. By buying Books, and when we're talking books, books that people who have experienced things in life are talking about. I, I read a lot about how people improve their own life. People like Jim Rohn, people like uh, uh, Bob Proctor that I was talking about, 
people like uh, Think and Grow Rich Napoleon Hill. That's a book that is timeless. And so when you start reading into all these things and seeing how people make differences in their life, you learn from them. So go into your mind, start taking out those things that are not necessary, start putting in new things that are absolutely necessary, and start to make your life a better experience on this earth. So I'm going to stop here and thank you so much for watching this video because remember there's so many more coming your way from us. Our dream for you is to achieve success in whatever you're looking for. And when you achieve success, to us, we have also achieved success because we've been able to touch your life. So we hope to see you in the next video and thank you so much and stay blessed.